This is Jay Michaels, and we are here on Channel I celebrating Ewing Reviewing. Now, Ewing Reviewing, for those of you who don't know, is a series of archival books that talk about the notable productions of a particular year off and off of Broadway. And, and from what I understand, Jan Ewing, its author, is, is even breaching out into regional productions very soon, which is thrilling. Uh, you might also say this is a movie log. Now, why do I say that? Because this year, Ewing Reviewing 2020, is not only doing the live productions that happened until Friday the 13th of March, but the Zoom productions that happened after that. So this is a very unique book. And I'm here with a very unique company. And I'm thrilled to have a whole bunch of people here. <laughs> absolutely marvelous. I'm here with the Resolve Theater. Uh, they are in the book and, and from what I understand, well-deserved. So welcome, welcome all of you. I'm glad, to, I'm glad to, you can all be here. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Uh, now, now, like I say, if, if you're in the book, that means you're a good one. Tell us about your show. Tell us about the company. Well, the, the, the play is called Marrow and it is uh, about a gay bashing and it's after effects actually. And Craig, our lovely actor here plays a multitude of, of, of characters. Um, he channels the mother, lover, father, the rehabilitation nurse and the attackers and the lead Javier who is attacked switches on a dime through the whole piece. So it really creates a portrait of, of the effects of violence against LBGTQIA. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a short, sharp shock of a play. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think it also plays with um, memory, right? And how, how do you hold on to memory and what makes someone you, makes you your authentic self and that is through your memories and your life experience. And um, it also has the, um, like why do, why, like we love, you know, why do we love, like why do we hate? And it really explores that in context um, and within story and you grow to love this character while like, off of the experience of them having something happen to them because of hate. So it really pl plays with your, your inner self and challenges you to like broaden your perspective. I, I, I say this uh, uh, from a snarky ad I saw uh, <laughs> at one point driving on a highway. It was for a storage company. And, and <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. And they had something on there. They said, if, if you don't like gay marriage, well then don't get gay married. And I thought that was very funny, but there was something very prophetic about it. Uh, and, and what you just said about love and hate uh, uh, hits me on that level. It's like, if someone wants to care about someone else, we're really bothered by this. I know. If, if, someone, if someone wants to show love in this world where there's so much animosity and we've just gone past a, a level of animosity that I've not seen in my lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're really going to condemn someone for loving? Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, any play that hits that kind of topic, that hits uh, uh, systemic racism, that hits uh, uh, gay bashing and things like that, I think, I think you are hitting something that is so important for everyone to hear. You know, we could say, oh, they don't need to hear it. They don't need to hear it. Everyone needs to hear about plays like yours. Now, I'm it's, getting the feeling the, there are two actors in this play. No, no, there's only no, Craig. I'm Craig. Brian is the playwright. Brian I'm Quirk. the playwright. And I was the directress, and Craig is the actor. Yeah, so Craig, wait, wait, Craig wait. takes us on this journey, like in, in, yeah. Yes, and it is unfortunately amazingly timely and also funny. It's not just it's not just dark, but but it really is ab about a message of love. I mean, mm -hmm. why why hate? Why not love? Is really sort of the the question of the play and and it's it's we've been fortunate enough to do it in in at different venues with wildly different audiences and and really it comes through in a very conservative audience in in Colorado at a workshop down in the south in Scotland we did it in New York as well which is why we're 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 here but uh, it really reaches out i think because it is a message of love and you do get to know craig's character through sort of around but him too as he struggles to remember because the memory 
memory is sort of a, a strand through the play. So yeah, it's a it's a powerful piece. So Craig, essentially you're playing this one character who who was the, the subject of this gay bashing and, and you are remembering all the people involved. Yeah, so it, it really is a memory play in many ways. And, um, and it's what's beautiful about it is somebody uh, in a moment recounting uh, uh, beautiful things, terrible things, and also seeing how um, those things are, are minimized and mm -hmm. expanded to something that's bigger than reality. So it really does play with uh, memory, it plays with our perception of time, and it really um, asks you to question and, uh, what's meaningful in life, mm -hmm. and how your memory uh, holds a lot of meaning for you, and mm -hmm. um, and it helps you find place and purpose and, and love, too. So, and it asks the question, "What are you without that part of yourself?" Oh, completely. Uh, I have an expression: "Are you a genius by accident or on purpose?" Uh, I guess I have to ask the playwright and the director this. In terms of this, uh, there's a psychological thing that says when we remember something, we don't remember an event; we remember the emotion mm -hmm. that the event uh, uh, elicited in us. Yeah. Uh, so really by having one actor play all of these things in a very realistic, physical, traumatic moment really enables uh, all of us to, to dig inside of ourselves and say, how do we remember this event? What are we coloring the event to look like? Wow. Uh, tell us about Resolve. Tell us about the company. So Resolve Productions, uh, it basically... Uh... <laughs> We're a small little uh, small company, and we mm -hmm. came out of uh, the process. We were working on a play by Enda Walsh years ago called Mr. Man, and it was a matter of necessity. We were putting it up, and somebody was like, "Well, I just need to put something down. Who are you, <laughs> what are you doing?" And um, and we just popped up with, "We are Resolve Productions," mm -hmm. um, and that never actually changed. So yeah. since then, though, that that project uh, launched us into. Um, doing that, uh, that show of Enda Walsh's here stateside. Then we had an opportunity to do an Irish tour, mm -hmm. actually, of that show. And since then, um, we've known Brian for a long time, and he wanted to give us the opportunity to explore this work with him. So it was an amazing opportunity to delve deeper. So this is really, um, we tend to take a long time on projects, and this is the, really the, the second one we've done in about five years, six, six years, years, six yeah. years, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and right now this production uh, is slated to go to uh, Edinburgh. Uh, we were supposed to go this year, then the pandemic hit, and Assembly Productions has us slated for 2021, but we'll see. So we're, um, we're continuing to um, work with Mero and see, uh, see uh, how far we can take that. We'd love to tour it other places globally too. And at the same time, um, sitting down to think, what do we want to do next? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's it's very funny, uh, uh, Brian. You you obviously are thinking very technically because how much how much do you really have to spend to transport this play? Hello, Craig. Hello, <laughs> Melissa. Get on a plane. There, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Don't pack anything up. You know, it's you. Uh, really brilliant. Um, now, now I ask this genteely. I ask this the nuanced question, as one says. Uh, where did you get the idea for this? Uh, it it came to me because it it was the the origin. It, I was doing my first play, and I was in San Francisco, and we got extended. And this is when I was acting. I I wrote and acted my first play, which. I never did that again, um, but it was it was a lonely. It was I did it at various places, and it was uh, based on Robert Mablethorpe and his work. And so I was doing it in San Francisco, and I got extended. And there was a lovely, lovely actor, um, and he was on the board of the theater, and they made a guest room for me. And he told me the story of of his gay back. Okay. And so that was really the the jumping off point. The it's there's me, there's my imagination, there's the kernel of that this really happened, you know, th somebody that it really happened to, um, and also the 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 it, Trump as well sort of ha has added a whole new layer to to the urgency of of this of telling this story and and getting it out there. So. Uh -huh. 
uh, completely in agreement. Okay, so so it was the story you had heard. Okay, it was the um, story I had um, heard, and then you know, tons of research as far as the the condition and what you know, as, as far as recovery from this sort of damage. Um, but also, it was an act of, of imagination too, and really a gift sure. to sure. You know. Well, uh, 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 I'm not. I, I guess this is ironic or something like this to say, but I'm glad it didn't happen to you. I'm glad. I was. <laughs> I was I was concerned you were going to say, well, there was a time and that this was somewhat autobiographical. So no, so. Well, you know, in it, it, it's it's it. I've escaped. I got away from the gay bashers twice, twice. And it hasn't it hasn't been for a while, but I literally like chased to, you know, got to my door, shut it and got away. Wow. And another time just got away. So I've been I need to knock on some wood here. But so I, yeah, no, no, I've been. I've been I've been fortunate to not have have that happen to me, but yeah, to to be able to honor his the, the kernel of that story. That's great. That's great, Melissa. Um, uh, it was just you and you and Craig. That yeah. was it. Let's have a rehearsal wherever because yeah. it's just the two of us. Yeah. What What did you tap into? What did you uh, What research did you do to guide him on that journey? Um, well, it was great that, um, you know, I worked with Brian before too. So we already have a relationship in place like writer and director, um, but to crack down with Craig, he's very physical. So finding the physical archetypal gesture for each character was really important so that we had something physical to ground us and come back to. And then finding um, like a, a rhythm or a line that really kicks you into that character. So finding those things, like as we were developing, but then within our research, so we went, um, we both are very lucky to teach up at the National Theater Institute at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center and um, great, incredible program. And I'm alum of the program, I'm a big fan. So we went up for like a three day or four day residency and we pulled the play apart. You know, we were like, like we had like post-its all over the room and we were figuring out like the, what's the journey because there's like, um, there's a, a like a one type of through line, but then there's like this other through line that's like pulling you down. And so we use like the trenches of the ocean and like the different layers because he's coming in and out of a, a coma. So like we were using that as part of our vocabulary of like what's happening to him visually. And so we would just really like pulled the part, like stretch the play in order to figure that out. And we knew that that ocean kept coming back to us, like water and movement and um, and how you hear when you're underwater and what you don't hear. And we use that and it was, it's really, you can hear that element in our sound design. Like when we started collaborating with our sound designer, which I would say is the other actor in the play, it so. gives yeah. Craig someone to play with. Like, um, so um, that experience, um, you, can, you can fully hear him being inspired by those conversations of like us telling him what that work was and then how he can warp things and take us somewhere else and you know push out of it um it's really i hope that was helpful to tell you a little bit about our work that's great and and yeah. for me it is i i've i've been part of the the indie theater and film community for over 40 years and so i'm still uh, oh, I, how could I, you be that old what do you mean for over 40 years <laughs> <laughs> You're a nice man. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I'm still fascinated when I hear about the creative process. I've, I've, I've spoken with, I've worked with, et cetera, so many people, but I'm still fascinated when I hear what do people pluck artistically? Yeah. yeah. What do they feel inside of them to create these things? And, and this especially, it's like one actor remembering, playing this one character, remembering, coming in and out of a coma and all of that. Uh, the, the journey must have been amazing. The journey, yeah, yeah. Journey must have been amazing. Yeah. Craig's a pretty special person to get to collaborate with, like the physical nuance of like you know he's someone that I love calling it homework. Like I can give him like homework of like stuff that I know he's gonna take to another level before we get in the room again. So it's very helpful. And then how he attaches to the sound design. You know when we start to, when we start to have that collaboration, the depth of the show you know, got to explore a whole new layer and level and experience because you feel it in the audience where you're like, oh, we're underwater with this character. Like we're in a coma right now trying to look out. Oh wait, we're, we're coming down looking at it. Oh, we're on top of a mountain feeling beautiful and gorgeous and like the strongest in our life. You know, so it really helps to place up. You, in listening to you, I'm reminded there's a book written by Anthony Schur when he mm. did Richard III. Oh, yeah. It's called Year of the King. And it's his year's journey 
playing this this iconic role and and you could see what was really important to him it's a good thick book all about his journey to playing Richard III, like the, the thinnest chapter, it's like a page and a half or something. It just said, we opened it, went very well, the critics enjoyed it, and then we had a lovely time. And that was it. So it was like the performance was 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 good, but the main thing was the journey. And I could hear that the, the journey was quite was quite marvelous for, for you. Um, uh, it, it's easy to, to ask this question of you because you've kind of mastered it just with one actor in this way. Um, we're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. We, we have a new administration, uh, however slow they're doing it, there, there's vaccines coming out. Um, what's the theater going to look like when we can all get back to business? Mm. Well, they're gonna have to do Marrow because you know, it's, a, it's only one actor, so they're not yeah, really to worry about, you know. Talk about social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's gonna be, I, I mean, I think it's, we're gonna have to be masked, you know, I mean, Unfortunately, people are going to be masked, and I think you're going to have to wear your mask, even when, once we we all have the vaccine. I think, but I think we're going to come back. I think it's going to be in the fall. I mean, I really yeah. do hope so. And I think, I mean, I think it's going. To, we're going to be masked, and they're going to have to have, you know, socially, all, all the all the the steps in place. But I think people need people need the theater you know i mean they really need it it's just sure. elemental and important um but they're gonna have to be real taskmasters about people like with the cell phones their cell phones got off but with the mask i think they'll be like you know <laughs> oh, that's it. put on the mask and be 98.6 or please don't come to the show right, um, right. what I'm, about you what do you think uh, i mean as far as it coming back i mean my two i think i think we're coming back uh, and I think we're coming back uh, from where we were at the very beginning. And I'm not saying the beginning of the American theater. I'm saying the beginning of theater. Uh, I think theaters are going, I think the building is going to be prohibitive. There are old buildings that do not have proper ventilation. There are seats that you just can't uh, separate them. And when you're off off Broadway and you're, you, you have 75 seats in there, uh, uh, how, many, how, how, much, how many seats could you sell at six feet apart? What, you're gonna have three people in the audience? Um, I think theater is going to return, but it's going to return in parking lots. It's going to return in community centers. It's going to return in outdoor spaces. It's going to return in the middle of Times Square, standing next to the George M. Cohan sign. Mm. Uh, I think I think it's coming back, and I think theater is going to be a term, and it's no longer going to be a building. It's no longer mm. going to be something solid. We will be doing theater mm. in the parking lot. We will be doing theater in the community center. We will be doing theater in the garden. So I think it's coming back and I think we're, we're going to enjoy that. And I also think this is going no, this is not leaving us. I think the concept of the video play of the Zoom reading of all of this, um, and I've dealt also with unions uh, over this time period for projects that I'm working on. And it's amazing how Actors' Equity and SAG and AFTRA need to come together on some things. So uh, I see a great joining. Mm. Uh, it's it's going to be a big bang, but it's yeah. going to be a great joining of, of artists. And I think it's going to be anywhere. You, you, you pitch your tent, you do a play. I think we're going to see that. As long as, as, long as it co comes back sooner than later, you know, I mean, I miss it so much. I'm like a crack whore as far as going to the theater. I mean, I, I, like, I go all the time. It's sort of like ah, that in the art museums. And I know they're back, but I'm like, I'm being very, I'm being very careful, you know, I'm just being cautious, but I, I'm longing for that connection, you know. I completely understand. I would love to go back to, to the theaters, to the cabarets, to, to the events. I would love to. Uh, there are far too many people I know who have no idea I have legs. And, and, so, <laughs> and so I need, I need to show them, look, I'm five, nine. You, you could tell really I am. Um, you gotta do that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hear about this amazing company, Resolve Theater. If you want to hear about this amazing show, Marrow, and if you want to learn about these really visionary artists, uh, you can order your copy of Ewing Reviewing to learn all about this play. Uh, Ewing Reviewing is going on sale at on Amazon.com and where all the quality books are sold, probably in about two or three weeks. But right now you can get it immediately. You go to pupsbooks.com, P-U-P-S books.com. And there, there are discounts, and there you can grab this, the 2019, the 2018 edition, and join his mailing list so that you can get the 2021, 22, 
This interview and all the others for you and reviewing is on Channel I. Channel I is the independent theater and film channel on YouTube. There are over 100 interviews with independent artists, playwrights, actors, producers, filmmakers, etc. There are programs that discuss Shakespeare. All the way through, we have programs that discuss all genre films as well. So go to J. Michael's Arts, J. A. Y. M. I. C. H. A. E. L. S. A. R. T. S. dot com, and there's a link there that takes you right to uh, to channel I. Uh, and and when you get there, please press subscribe. Uh, uh, now, now now Craig doesn't mind being that one person all alone among several, but we all need friends, so please <laughs> press subscribe. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm I'm thrilled to have learned about this play. Uh, thrilled to have learned about you. Uh, lo love to find out more, and and I look forward to chatting with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.